Welcome to Just Say This, the place to get all the help you need for the birds and bees talks. I'm your host, Amy Lang. Just a quick reminder, this show is for grown-ups because I'll be swearing. There'll be lots of swears, and then I'll also be talking about grown-up sex. I can guarantee that your kids do not want to listen to this, and they really don't want to listen to it with you. You've been warned. Do you have a question for me? Please give me a call. The phone number is 206-926-1522, 206-926-1522, and I will answer on the show. And if you have a funny sex talk story, please call in those as well, 206-926-1522. Thanks. Hello, welcome back. I realize that I have not been ranting about anything lately. And I could rant about something. It starts with W, it's three letters long, ends with R. Not entirely clear how it relates to sex and stuff, but there's, oh, war crimes. Okay, done now. Anywho, y'all seem to like my tips that I gave a couple of episodes back. So I thought I'd give you another tip at the top. And this tip is probably the best, most fundamental, most helpful, and in some ways, the hardest. This tip is about you. The most important thing you can do for your kids is to take care of your own baggage around sexuality. For some of you, this is a tall fucking order. I know you may have been sexually abused, sexually assaulted, raped. I know that's part of your story. Some of you, lucky you, were not. Also, some of you may have participated in all of those things. And that is going to come to the sex talking party, whether you want it to or not. It might show up in really big ways. It might show up in little ways. It might not show up at all, but that's just not a thing. It's just not a thing. So here are some tips for helping you look at your sexual history and help you kind of recover yourself in some ways. Note to self, note to y'all, I am not a therapist. And if you need therapy, then you know that about yourself and I can help you get help. But the easiest place for you to get help, especially with sexual trauma, is RAIN, R-A-I-N-N dot org. Late in the day, trigger alert. Get help if you need it. Okay, here we go. On with my tipping. I think about this first tip as kind of the fluff tip, the leading into the deeper stuff tip. But also it's so helpful because, well, you'll find out because you're going to maybe take some of my advice and check this out for yourself. First of all, one of the easiest things you can do that helps you wade into this conversation or into thinking about these things is to think about how you learned about sex. Where'd you get your information? Did you have sex ed at school? Did your parents talk to you? Were you self-taught as one very funny daddy shouted at me across a crowded room when we were able to be in crowded rooms? How did you get your information What was that like for you? Was it enough? Was it too much? Was it too adult-like? You know, oftentimes I have people who tell me that they got a ton of information about sex when they were growing up. And then we talk a little bit more and it turns out they lived in a household where there were adults actively engaging in sex, lots of talk about it. Their parent was telling them all about their sex lives. Playboy magazines were lying around, porn was around. And yeah, that is one way for sure to learn about sex. I'm guessing I don't need to say out loud that this is not the healthiest way to learn about sexuality. Think about what your peers were talking about, where they were getting their information, what was going on in your friend group, who was dating whom. This is all ways you got information about sex and sexuality and relationships, right? It's the whole shebang. Many of us grew up with parents who had relationships with other people that were romantic. We learned a ton from that, right? For better or worse. Write it down, talk about it with a friend or a parenting partner. And these conversations about this stuff can be really funny and can be hard too because of the rough stuff that happened to us. But start with the generic big picture. That's the first thing to do. The second thing to do is talk about what you wish you had known and when and what values messages you wish you had been taught, what you wish you had been taught about just your physical body and body changes I do want to talk about the values piece of this because sometimes I've had parents say to me, I don't want to share my values with my kids because I want my kids to make up their own values. Sure, 
that happens, right? I'm guessing your values and your parents' values are not exactly the same. So please do not hesitate to share your values about relationships and sexuality with your kids. One thing to help you or one way to help yourself if you're not clear about your values about sexuality and values are really just what you believe is to look at what you were taught and then in a lot of cases, pick the opposite thing. So think about what you were taught when you were growing up, the messages in your culture and your family, however you were raised. And then sure, there's good stuff there and there's stuff that's not so good. You can use this information as a springboard for clarifying your values. And you'll find that as you think about your sexual values and as you have conversations about it, and as you look at the world, your values about sexuality and relationships will start to expand. You'll find all these little places where you're like, oh, what do I believe about that? And beyond the big picture, like when should someone stick parts and holes? How old should they be? What that, should that look like? No, sorry for the visual, but you know what I mean. The values thing is an evolving process. I remember when Milo, I think I already said this, but whatever, I'll say it again. Milo was probably nine and I was teaching at a library in public with people in front of me. And we were talking about when do you think it's okay for someone to have sex for the first time? And this mom said, oh, you know, I think 16, 17, and I'm going to let my kid have sex at home. I thought I was all evolved and whatnot. And I remember standing there and thinking, oh, God, not me. I'm not comfortable with that. And then... Lo and behold, my child gets older, I get older, and guess what? My value about that changed. Your values values are going to change, and this conversation is going to evolve, and you'll find something new all the time when your kids start sex ed. If they haven't already, there's stuff that might pop up for you that you remember. This is good stuff to share with your kids. Okay, about the sexual trauma... I don't think you should share your sexual traumas with your kids until they are much older, late teens or 20s, because they need to see us as whole and healthy and happy. And when we talk about the stuff that is really hard or has been really hard for us, that can change their view of us. Also, if you have not done some really pretty good work and hard work around this, it's also going to make it harder for you to have conversations with your kids. You'll be more likely to freak them out. Once upon a time, I ran into somebody I was teaching in a room with human beings. I know, can you tell I'm getting a little desperate to get out there? I was teaching and I said this, that I don't think you should share your sexual traumas with your kids until they're much older. And this mom came up to me and she says, I tell my, I've told my kids, I think oldest was eight, all about what happened to me, how I was sexually assaulted. I don't think she was raped. And I don't remember if she was sexually abused, but it was too much information for me. And so I said, you know, that's your prerogative. I don't think that's helpful to your kids. But anyway, my belief is you should keep that to yourself unless you need to talk about it. So if your child is assaulted or raped or abused, then you can very carefully say, hey, this happened to me too. At that point, there's a reason to share, a legit reason to share. And again, it's your call, your kids, whatever, but I'm a no-go on that one. Okay, there you go. Some tips about getting started, continuing. This is an ongoing conversation. There's always something more. There's always something more from our past and our present that we need to think about and think about how we want our kids to experience this delightful, wonderful world of sexuality. Next up, we have a voicemail from a mom with uh, some feedback for me, and she was lovely about it. If you want to give me feedback, I'm happy to listen to it and occasionally play it on the show. And then she also shares something pretty dang hilarious that her kiddo said. And finally, there's a link to Kids Say the Darndest Things in the show notes. Enjoy. Hi, Amy. Um, Thank you for your podcast. Um, I am the mom to uh, a nine-year-old girl, and I am not calling with a question today. Two things. One is um, a a request for a change or a diversification uh, tactic, and the other one is a fun story from the trenches. So my uh, my request is um, that in your podcast, a lot of times you cover hard topics, And um, when you kind of talk about like, okay, now that was really tough, maybe go and you insert some self-care suggestions there, it seems almost exclusively that you mention wine. And I'm somebody who's trying to create some distance for myself between me and mommy wine culture. And so if you just wanted to toss in a few, um, maybe some other ideas like taking a deep breath or lighting a candle for yourself or grab some chocolate or maybe you, after listening to this, you need to go take some fresh air outside, grab some walk or exercise. There's like a billion different ways we can take care of ourselves and wine is only one of many options. Um, So thank you for hearing me out on that. 
the other thing I wanted to call was a fun story from the trenches, which is this. When my kiddo was really little, she discovered her clitoris, and there was lots of humping, and I just called it masturbating because that's just what I called it. Um, although I've heard you in other podcast episodes say that, you know, it's hardly masturbation because it's not adult, and I get that, but it, masturbating is what I called it. Um, but she was very, very little and struggled with that um, four-syllable word, <laughs> um, and so she ended up calling it ogle caking. And we all found that really, really funny. So to this day, anytime anyone is humping anything, it is ogle caking. Um, and that's what we call kid masturbation. Uh, and I thought that was amusing enough to share. So thank you very much for your work. Do you want your kids to feel better than you did when it comes to sex? To feel better about who they are as a sexual person? To have healthier relationships? My Birds and Bees Solution Center has all you need to make this happen and to be their go-to source. There is a deep dive in how to have the talk so you feel confident. There are vetted books and videos for your kids. You don't need to worry about whether they're age appropriate. You'll also get a video on ages and stages, what they need to know at each age and stage so you can get caught up and then plan for the future. There are videos on puberty, porn, and online safety, and tons more. I've also included something I don't do any place else. It's live Q&A. It's my podcast only live. It's special to the Solution Center. I want this to be as accessible as possible. It's super cheap. $69 a year. I did some used car salesman math and that's 19 cents a day. And because you're a podcast listener, if you use the code podcast, you'll get 15% off. I invite you to go and check it out. Birdsandbeescourse.com. That's birdsandbeescourse.com. That's it for this week. Thanks to everyone who's been calling in. The number is 206-926-1522. So please leave me a message if you have a question or a tale from the trenches. And thank you to Melanie Smith, my producer, and to Rolf, who wrote the Birds and Bees and Kids theme song. 